Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Prophet Bradley coming to you from St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, today, we're gonna, I'm going to show you some pretty neat things about the rapture that you might have seen and you might not have seen. But Lord Jesus will be returning within the next two years, and I'm going to show you what he has shown me. Okay? So... This stuff is deep. Um, you probably haven't heard anybody else teach this like this before. So, okay, here we go. If anybody tells you that Jesus Christ can return at any moment, don't believe it. It's a lie. Okay, that's a complete lie. Because God Almighty pours his spirit out before this happens. He will be pouring his spirit out this coming April in 2022 during Passover, okay? And I'm gonna use this for the basis of what I'm gonna be showing you, okay? I'm so sure of it, I'm positive. Um, everything's coming together. So, here we go. Okay, there are a couple places the essence of what I'm sharing with you today is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 through 17. And here's what it says. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them who also who are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Asleep means dead. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede them who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, he's not coming back to set his feet on the earth this time. He's, we're going to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, that is one passage. The other passage, passage is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Or we'll be given glorified bodies when the Lord Jesus comes back. Okay? So, those are the two verses that um, I'm going to be sharing with you guys concerning w this happening when Lord Jesus returns. In the air, to catch his bride or the body of Christ, his people. All right? Now, there are past pictures of God taking people. You will find one in Genesis 5, 24. It says, Enoch walked with God and God took him. Okay? That was one instance of a person not dying, but being raptured, if you will, caught away. If I use the word rapture, don't make it a big deal. I mean the catching away. Okay? But Enoch was taken up in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. And Elijah was taken up in 2 Kings 2.11. You know, find that. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. This is heavy stuff. You're going to like it. And it came to pass, as they went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and separated them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind 
into heaven. Okay, that's the Elijah pickup. Okay, where the angels come down to pick God's people up. Okay, there were, I'm sure there was a driver. <laughs> and, um, horses of fire, a chariot of fire. Probably had an angel driving it. It doesn't say that, but okay. And we see now again, this again in Psalms. 91 verse 2. Or Psalms 91 verse 12. I'm sorry. Okay. 91 verse 12 says, speaking of the angels, well, I'll back up to verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Okay, when God returns and blows the trumpet, his angels will be literally grabbing hold of his people and taking them up. Unlike John, the, the apostle John, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, where John was just called up. Jesus said to John, come up hither, or come up here. And John was able to go up, okay? But we see the angels mentioned as God's reapers again. And Matthew 13, verse 30. Here he's talking about the unsaved and the saved. The tares are the unsaved, and the wheat is the born-again believers. Matthew 13, 30, Jesus is speaking. Let both tares and wheat grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, which are the angels, gather together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus tells the angels who are the reapers, but gather the wheat or the believers into my barn or bring them to my house be another way to put it okay so the elijah pickup is mentioned in psalms 91 2 and second kings 2 11 and genesis for enoch genesis 5 verse 24 now people um The Bible tells us that Lord Jesus comes at a time when you expect him not in Matthew 24, verse 44. Okay, we see this echoed again in 1 Thessalonians um, 5, verses 1 and 2. And verse 4. Well, before I show you that one, let me show you a, diff a different one that corresponds with this even better. Um, Acts chapter 1. Okay, here, here's when Jesus went up. In Acts chapter 1, verses 9 and 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked, the, the apostles looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels. Who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? 
the same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And we just seen that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, um, verses 15 through 17. The trumpet, he comes down. He went up that way. We go up that way. Okay. Um, one thing before I show you this next thing. Jesus Christ is symbolic of the body of Christ on the earth. Okay. You need to understand that. And this is important because after the Spirit is poured out and we are given a glorified body, then we can clock Jesus' return from that time, okay? It's going to be the middle of April 2022 when God's Spirit is poured out. That's not the same thing as rapture. But Jesus is symbolic of the body of Christ, in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible tells us, To whom also he, Jesus, showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen by them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. After Jesus was glorified, remember we're going to get a glorified body in the middle of April, 2022 during Passover the believers are okay after Jesus got a glory glorified body he was only here 40 days and then phew, okay he's symbolic of the body of Christ so once we're glorified we may only be here 40 days which and I'm going to show you that it's late spring that Jesus actually returns of 2022 or 2023, depending on which prophetic parallel picture he uses, okay? In this picture, it would be late spring of 2022 because it would be 40 days after we are given a glorified body. And that rhymes with Romans 9.28, which says that, this harvest will be a, he calls it a short work in Romans 9, verse 28. For he will finish the work, the harvest, and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Okay, 40 days is a short, very short work. Okay, so that could be the time of the Lord's return, 40 days after we are given a glorified body. Okay, the other one mentioned is Esther chapter 2, verse 12, which most of you know is a prophetic parallel picture of Esther the queen meeting Jesus the king, okay? In Esther chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after she had been 12 months, according to the regulations for the women, for so were the days of their beautification accomplished to wit six months with oil of myrrh and six month months with sweet odors and with balms for the beautifying of the women okay in this prophetic parallel picture the bride is getting ready to meet the king there is a 12 month beautification process that takes place once we are given glorified bodies if it isn't 40 days, it's going to be 12 months. These are the only two prophetic parallel pictures that speak and show of time, the length of time that um, it, will be, it will take for the bride to meet the king after the beautification process is over with. Okay? 40 days or 12 months after we have been given glorified bodies during the middle of April and Passover. 
during Passover. Okay, now I want to show you. Oh, you can watch a rapture video, my very first one, and see the real-time speed of the rapture. It is um, called Real Twilight Surprise, Prophet Bradley Vanishes. After I blow my shofar, if you blink, you'll miss me disappear. No special effects or gimmicks, okay? You'll love that video, I promise you. Okay. Um, I'll show you something from Nahum that's very, very interesting. Now, this is the only place where cars are mentioned in God's Word, okay? Is the book of Nahum. And in chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the prophet is describing cars. Now listen to this. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots, or cars, shall be with flaming torches, that's the headlights, in the day of his preparation. A day is equal to a year, according to Ezekiel 4, 6, and Numbers 14, verse 34. Okay? In pro prophetic timeline. The chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, or in the year of Jesus' preparation to return. He's talking about cars. His road rage is mentioned here. And the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariots, or cars, shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways, or the highways. They shall seem like torches, the headlights. They shall run like the lightnings. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of road rage going on in the year that the Lord Jesus returns. All right, I don't know if it's because of danger and everybody's running around uh, doing their thing. But, um, okay, the next stuff I want to show you is probably some of the more important. Oh, no one knows the day of the hour of Jesus' return, and he tells us that in Matthew 24, verse 36, because there's always two days going on in the earth and three time zones. So if Jesus himself told you personally uh, when he was coming back, you still couldn't know because there are always two days in the earth with three time zones. You see why he says that? Okay, um, this next stuff is, is very, very cool. Um, in uh, Song of Solomon, I'm going to start, I'll give you the timeline of his return now. In Song of Solomon, chapter 2, we see the, a picture of the rapture, and a prophetic parallel picture of the rapture. And here's what it says, a Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. Now notice, it's, it's referring to late spring here, and I'm going to show you two more, um, two more um, pictures, prophetic parallel pictures, concerning the fig tree that agree with this. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. Now, God is, Jesus is speaking to his bride here. My beloved spoke, Jesus, and said unto me, the bride, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. This is, this is the rapture here. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. God pouring out the former and latter rain. That's what he's talking about. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grapes give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, who art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. 
after winter, before summer. You see that? Okay, here we go again. Uh, Mark 13, verses 28 through 32. Mark 13, verses 28 through 32. Jesus is speaking again. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, springtime again, late spring, ye know that summer is near, spring. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but words shall not pass away. Okay, you see it again? Late spring. Okay, um, we see us again in James 5, verse 8 through 9. James 5. Verses 8 through 9. Okay. The money dumps, money, all the money fails in James 5, verses 1 through 4. The Spirit is poured out in verse 7. And in verse 8 and 9, right after the Spirit is poured out, it's he says, be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth near. Murmur not against one against another, brethren, lest ye be judged. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. That's Lord Jesus just about to come back. Right after the rain, verse 7, you see the money failing first in James 5, verses one through four. Okay. Um, we see this um, mentioned in, referenced in Luke 21, verses 25 through 27. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth and nations with perplexity to see in the waves roar and men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass and look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Okay, um, Matthew 24, verses 32 through 36. Matthew 24, verses 32 through 36. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. Here it is again. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So it's Talking about right before summer again. So likewise ye, when you see, see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, doesn't say the month or the season, the year or the season. It says, but of that day and hour, Knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay? There it is again. The day and the hour no man knows because there's two days and three time zones at any particular time on the earth. All right? You need to understand that. Um... Okay, let's see what else I got for you concerning this. So if God uses um, the Acts 1-3 prophetic parallel picture as his truth for the rapture, 
you will be here about six months to April and then about 40 days after that. And Jesus will come in uh, late spring of 2022. But if he uses Esther chapter 2 verse 12 as his prophetic parallel picture for the timing, it will be late spring of 2023. Because you get the glorified body in April, you go a year till the next April. And again, it will be late spring. So that would be about a year and eight months till the Lord Jesus returns. It's going to be one or the other. He's, he's coming quick. You guys know that. You see all this stuff happening on the earth. Do not turn your heads. Use your common sense. Um, okay, in 1 Thessalonians 5, he talks about, um, not being ignorant when he returns, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. He's saying that day, okay? And Hebrews 10, verse 25, Hebrews 10, verse 25, he speaks of this day again, the day that the Lord returns. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of your, ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Now he's talking about the day Jesus returns in, in some of these verses. I'm telling you the season and, and the year. It's either going to be late spring 2022 or late spring 2023, depending on which prophetic parallel picture the Lord Jesus uses. Okay? Do understand that. Um, let's see. What else I've got here? My time is running out very quick. You know, and if it is the end of May which is late spring. It's going to be a May day for all the unsaved, you know. But um, it'll be the last days of May for God's people. All right? End of spring. Late spring, people. All right? This is what we're looking at for Jesus' return. Late spring of 2022 or late spring of 2023, according to his word. The time he gives us with the, mentioning the figs in uh, so Song of Solomon chapter two, and in Mark 13, 28 through 32, Luke 21 verses 29 through 31, Hand and glove, they go together perfect. There's no dissension or um, argument there. It's easy to see what, he's, what he is saying. Okay, let me show you one thing that's going on. In Jeremiah, fit right now, Jeremiah 50, verse 34, God says, I will give rest to the land. That's the drought that's begun. Can't use the land it's resting when there's a drought. You can't use it. And he says, I will disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. That's the work ethic. You guys see all them ships sitting off of China and California right now? He's disquieting the inhabitants of Babylon, America. People are quitting their jobs. Other people won't go to work. Things have begun to slow down. Your Christmas is sitting out there in the Pacific Ocean unless your heart is where it's supposed to be with the Lord. Okay. Pray for me 
Pray for yourselves. Pray for others, especially your unsaved friends. And Lord willing, I'll be able to make another video when Holy Ghost gives me enough to show you guys. Okay? Let's pray real quick. Abba, my Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you that you show us all things and lead us into all truth and that you keep nothing from your prophets, including your secrets, according to Amos 3, 7. I th we thank you that you are getting us ready and preparing us and that you have somebody to show us when a Approximately, you are coming back because we're all waiting for you, our blessed hope, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we thank you for this. Amen and amen. Have a very wonderful day, my brothers and sisters, and God bless you.